What? Falling coconuts? What? Come on, no way. Shoveling snow with constipation and even escalators. Today, we are breaking down some more unusual things that cause people way more injury and death than one may realize. Do you agree with this list? Weigh in with your thoughts. All right, let's dive right in. Number one, tripping. That is correct. Tripping is a significant mechanism to how somebody could actually die. But how? Why? People who typically are falling in general have difficulty with balance and then they may not know that they're tripping and they crack their head open and they have major head traumas, including intracranial bleeding, such as a subdural and epidural or subarachnoid hemorrhage. And all of this bleeding within the brain significantly increases mortality, then also morbidity relating to traumatic brain injuries. More than 9 million people come to the emergency department every year for tripping related injuries. So I definitely agree with this one. Please be careful out there. And sorry for when you come to the emergency department and we throw that hard seat collar on your neck is to protect your spine. Number two, mozzarella sticks. Mozzarella sticks statistically is one of the most choked on foods. Who doesn't love mozzarella sticks out there? But I can see how really cheesy, nice fried thing chewing that people can choke on. We actually see a lot in the emergency department where people end up not chewing their food as well as they should, which we call mastication, and end up getting stuck in their esophagus and they're choking. So you can almost choke in two different ways. Choking, you can basically get it occluded into your airway versus actually getting it stuck in your esophagus. So we see a lot of people who get food stuck in their esophagus, mostly big pieces of meat, they get stuck in there, but you're not able to swallow anything and you drool and everything comes right back up. Different mechanisms, but you know, if it occludes your airway, you can't breathe, it needs to get out of there using the Heimlich maneuver. If it gets stuck in your lungs, we'll call a pulmonologist, they'll do a bronchoscopy, get it out of there. And if it's stuck in your esophagus, we'll call a gastroenterologist and they'll do an upper endoscopy to get it out of there. Have you guys ever choked on anything? Let me know in the comments. Number three, cheerleading. So cheerleading has had a history of some rare kind of weird deaths. And I can imagine it's related to head injury as well as a cervical spine injury. So could it happen? Yeah, probably. But have I ever seen that happen? No, I've seen people who fall in from great heights and they've injured themselves, but I've never actually seen a cheerleader come in due to a cervical spine injury or a traumatic brain injury that could occur from being dropped on your head. Number four, constipation. Constipation leads to diverticulosis, which leads to diverticulitis or colitis, which are inflammation and infections of your colon. It can also cause bowel obstructions. It can cause and lead to further things down the road. Potentially, there's some potential connection of colorectal cancers. Please make sure that you're getting all the excrement out of your body and that you are regular. We see so many people that come to the emergency department with abdominal pain, and at the end of the day, it's usually related to significant constipation. And people will even say, hey, I go to the bathroom at least once or once a day or once every other day, but they're like little rabbit droppings. We do a CT scan and bam, your whole colon is full of poop and you're getting a lot of gas pressure and peristalsis discomfort. And that's why your pain is always there and then it gets worse and then it comes down and it's still there painful and then it gets worse and then it comes down. It's because the intestines are moving. If you add fevers, uh, sweating, and blood to that, get to the hospital and get checked out ASAP. But even then, if you have abdominal pain and you don't feel well, get to the hospital and get checked out, even if it is constipation. Number five, escalators. Holy cow. You ever look at those escalators? They have those like jagged, nasty, spiky things right at the end of each stair because of how it actually like circulates. But man, those are not potentially deadly of what I've seen. I see people come in scraped and fall, but you can definitely fall down, it's metal. And the biggest thing you always worry about, obviously, is intracranial bleeding, cervical fractures. But more common injuries that we do see are related to like abrasions and lacerations due to escalators. Have you guys ever injured yourself on an escalator? Let me know in the comments. Number six, shoveling snow. Yes, for all you out there who shovel snow, please be careful because cardiovascular disease gets accentuated. Coronary artery disease will actually rear its ugly head causing people to have cardiac arrest due to myocardial infarctions or MIs, AKA heart attacks, because you get dumped on with a ton of snow. You're going out there, you're trying to shovel it, getting it out of the way, but you're doing a ton of cardiovascular exercise to which your body's probably not used to. And you're putting so much strain on your heart, which then can dislodge one of those plaques off of the vessels within the coronary vessels and then cause a big occlusion, causing a heart attack and could kill you. If you are in an area where you need to shovel lots of snow, 
please make sure that you're able to do that. And if you're not, maybe think of other means, have somebody come do it for you, get a truck to come in with a plow or invest in one of those snow blowers out there. Number seven, water. What water? Okay, think about this. So we all need water. We know we need water, but too much water isn't good. Too little water isn't good. If you swallow too much water, maybe inhale it, you could actually die. So think about it this way. If you have way too much water in your system, you're actually diluting out your electrolytes, which electrolytes have to do with so many different things than just like, I need electrolytes because I'm sweating so much, but it has to do with a lot of the different mechanisms on a cellular level relating to how everything works. Our cells have these different transporters and different things on the cell membranes that have to do with action potential and all these other things where like the hydrogen and sodiums and calciums and potassium, all these different things are going in and out of cells. And if you don't have it in appropriate ratios, it actually will be detrimental to you. And it's the same thing if you inhale too much water into your lungs because you're flailing around in the water and you can't swim, that can also kill you because you can't breathe. So please be careful. It's essential for life, but it could also take your life. Number eight, falling coconuts. Interesting, I've never seen a falling coconut injury, but I can imagine if a coconut falls out of a nice, big, beautiful tree and cracks you on the head in the right spot, you could probably crack your skull. You could probably cause some intracranial bleeding and may end up killing you because of too much bleeding in your brain or maybe even causing a high cervical fracture because of the weight of the coconut and how it hits your head. Just remember, those coconuts could be a deadly weapon if they're just falling out of the tree and nail you right on the head. Number nine, champagne corks. Oh my gosh. Okay, you throw these things. I don't know if some of you out there have popped a bottle of champagne or using a saber to pop it off, but they're coming out pretty fast. H hitch in the eye, cause traumatic eye injuries. Outside, if the pressure is so much that it hits you on the side of the head and causes a vascular bleed, you're already at risk of having some sort of injury to the head. But if it hits on the side of your head, maybe, but I don't know, that would be like the most high pressure cork launching injury ever. So if it hits you on the eye, it could enucleate your eye, basically your the globe, which we call the eye. It could be definitely just like rupture and you could lose your eye um, and that would increase morbidity and would change your life uh, all in one quick moment. But my best friend's an ophthalmologist. I don't think he's ever seen a cork in the eye injury either. What other random things out there should have made the list but didn't? Let me know in the comments. But I hope you guys enjoyed this and you learned something. Make sure that you definitely check out this playlist right here. Binge watch all of it for me. And please make sure you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on, and hit that like button for me. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.